Ever since I first used Linux at age 11, I was pursuing a dream. The dream to finally have the perfect operating system. Stable, but still up to date. Beautiful, but still efficient. Secure, but still free. And after all these years of looking, hopping from distro to distro, and even trying out BSD a few times, I finally settled on the best operating system for me. Mac OS. Installing Mac OS. When I first booted up Mac OS on my machine, I was dumbfounded by how easy and simple the install process was. All I had to do was download the image off the internet, partition my USB with a master boot record scheme, FAT32 boot partition, add a completely separate partition for the OS image itself, insert the Clover EFI files, I downloaded off a GitHub page I couldn't read into my boot directory, use said Clover bootloader to boot up into the Mac OS installer, run through the installation process, then unmount the USB drive, install the bootloader files into the specific EFI directory in the Mac OS, and there, a simple install process for a fully functioning Mac OS system. Now sure, I could have just bought a Mac, but when I went to the Apple store, money in hand, and tried to buy one, the store clerk shut the door on me and kicked me out for looking like a commoner, so I had to settle for the super simple and convenient DIY method. Software. As mentioned previously, macOS is the culmination of my lifelong search for the perfect operating system. It's Unix-like, in fact based off FreeBSD, which means it's closer to the original Unix than any Linux distro out there. Not that it matters because all I use it for is browsing Facebook. The core appeal of any operating system is the package management, or in some cases, lack thereof. macOS is the ingenious solution of including a graphical package manager, but also having most of the actually good programs be available on separate websites as downloadable installers. This hybrid approach ensures that all the positive of package management and decentralized installers are present in the OS along with all the negatives. When it comes to supported software, it's essentially the same library of programs as Windows, except with one rule, no fun. Games and other programs that may contain trace amounts of fun are strictly disallowed from being available from macOS. All exceptions to this rule are fake and you're just making them up. La 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 la. The focus on professional, enterprise business software allows macOS to become the ultimate environment for workloads such as video editing, music production, photo editing, and everything else your 10th grade art teacher pretends to be qualified for. I personally gained an Adobe addiction after installing macOS. Now the only programs I use are Adobe programs. I'm not kidding, this script is being written in Adobe Story. As I've said in all my videos regarding Adobe, they make the best, most reliable, stable, fast, efficient, and well-designed professional software for all my rudimentary video editing needs. Of course, Apple has its own offerings for software. In fact, macOS by default includes all the professional software you'll ever need for amateur workloads. GarageBand, iMovie, iWork, iPDF, iTunes, iSkype, iSettings, iBrowser, iFile Explorer, they're all quality, well-designed programs. The only issue is every time I try to add more, it keeps asking me for this weird abstract code called a credit card information security. Now we can't talk about Mac OS without mentioning the outstanding security measures and how Mac can never be exploited. Well, at least next time, let me finish the sentence. Well, at least I can't get viruses running Mac OS. Oh, wait, what's this? Conclusion. Well, it appears my new macOS installation has already been annexed by some cleaner virus. How excellent! How about run run my gal? The robot says to submit to the glory of macOS. But I refuse. You know, after reflecting upon everything I've done in this operating system, none of it was any special or unique. If I wanted system stability, I could just use Debian. If I wanted a massive software library, I could just use Windows. And if I wanted a Unix-like operating system, then I could just use my next favorite operating system, OpenBSD. Thanks for watching this April Fool's video. It's a bit different from what I regularly do on this channel. It's scripted, and I don't really script stuff most of the time, so I don't know. It's fun to make. Uh, yeah.